What's up, Photo Booth family? Drew here. Today's video is a one hour long tutorial on Luma Booth. We're going over the settings. So if you use Luma Booth or you plan on using Luma Booth, this is a video for you. And I have to plug this before we get started. Join our school community. This is the call that was done for the members of the platform that'll be linked down there. And if you want to sign up for Luma Booth, we have a sign up and discount link. Get a discount, you guys. We'll leave that in the description. So hopefully you enjoy this video. See you soon. So I have Luma Booth on. This is on my my MacBook. Um, I'm not on the iPad, so it's going to look a little bit different um, when it comes to like me doing test photos. So if you don't know, you can actually use Luma Booth, you guys, as a um, you can use Luma Booth on your MacBook if it has the M2 chip. So if you have that uh, newer laptop, you can use it. So we're going to go through everything. Um, so really quick, when you first start, you're not going to see any events. If you're new to this, it'll have like a generic event. Like um, it'll like say here, like Jake and Kate's wedding, the famous wedding that no one's ever been to. Um, so let's go get back out of here. Let me close out of this. So I'll go ahead and just launch Luma Booth again really quick um, so we can just get this thing going. <clears throat> so first, let's talk about the events, right? If you set up your event on Luma Booth, you don't have to make a new event and then co copy the settings. You can literally go to the, like your first event and then let's just say the next event, same settings and everything. The easier way to do it is to watch. I'll click on it and then um, no, we'll go to here. We'll go to the Baby Rotus 2024. You just hit this button right here, right? So once it loads, and remember, you do need internet for it to load. You just hit this button right here where it says copy event settings. So now all of the settings will copy. And then it, like if it's a different event, we'll just put a uh, photo booth. One oh one uni demo, which is short for photo booth one oh one university demo. We'll just go to launch event. Boom. So then here, this will be the welcome screen. I know it looks a little bit weird, but we are using the laptop, but I promise you everything you're going to learn here is the same. So we literally have all of the settings we've done um, on here saved, the print layout. You'll have the design. You can change this if you need to, which you, you're probably going to need to. But let's just start off from the basics. Let's start off from right here, right? The welcome screen. Okay. So the welcome screen. This is, and again, guys, if you're if you're watching, if you're typing in into the, the comment section, I'm not going to be able to read it. So if you have a question, unmute your mic and just interrupt me. Um, you know, that's probably the easiest way to do it. But the welcome screen, right? The dimensions for the welcome screen are the dimensions of your iPad. And the way to find that is you literally just Google your iPad, then type in dimensions, screen dimensions. And right here, right? So let's just say it's 1920 by 1080. Since I'm using it in landscape, I flip it. I'll go 1080 to 1920, if that makes any sense. Because we have this, this one here is set for landscape. Um, Luma Booth has preset themes. And I'll be honest, I don't know one person that's ever used this. So if you see here, these are like, if, you, if you're just kind of lazy and you don't want to custom make anything. So if it's like a kid's party, you could literally just use this as the welcome screen. Um, but most of us like to um, upload our own, right? Um, so we'll go here to, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, but every shoe is different. Hey, uh, can you mute your mic, Xavier? Oh no, it's Claudia. Okay, sorry, Xavier, I called you out. It's not, it's not Xavier. All right, guys, please mute your, um, if you're not gonna be talking, just mute it, please. Okay, so let's go back. Um, show browse button. Let's just go through all these settings here. We'll go through, we'll go through here. So background, if you want to select your own welcome screen, this is the place you do it, right? You would find the, you'd find the, um, the file you would, you would add it. That would be the welcome screen. Um, we'll just, we'll just say, this is it, right? You, you made your dimensions and let's just say we're doing a backdrop expo, right? You could definitely do this. You could delete these assets here. You could type in the text. You would go to, uh, Hide text, show it, show browse button. Okay, we'll go over these settings. So the text would be basically, if you don't want any text here, you can remove it. Um, we'll go background. This is a little bit different here. Font, 
we'll go we'll go from the left to right we'll go theme all the way to the font okay so primary colors right and again this is gonna look a little bit different on your your ipad but these are the same settings you notice here where i have my mouse the button this is where the photo button you can actually change the color here right um this that would be the secondary one right the first one is changing primary button border colors throughout the guest experience let's just say we want this all pink you come here and then you find the pink and then it'll change it here and the whole experiences will be the color uh, the color of this i think this is an underrated feature that not a lot of people know about um i know some of you probably are watching this are like oh damn i didn't know you can change the color but like sometimes black won't make sense right because I, I think out of the box it is black um because if you're if your welcome screen's black and then your your uh your buttons and everything else is black like it's kind of an issue right and also too it's kind of cool if you can kind of match the theme um so we'll just change the color to blue we'll just go blue um themes again we went over this the high text you can move that show browse button this is something i think that a lot of people need to know what this means so having this enabled you notice right here when i turn it off it disappears having this on literally allows uh you to go onto the ipad right and uh, go back and look at other photos that were taken out on this event so why would you ever use this well sometimes Someone will use the photo booth and then <laughs> and then basically forget to put their phone number in or put the wrong number in and they'll come back to you and say, oh, hey, I I, I, um, I forgot to text the photo to myself or can I resend it? If you don't have this enabled, there's no way to do that, right? If you have this enabled, you can click on the iPad. Here, let me, let me turn this one on here so you guys can actually see it versus me showing on the screen. Um, I'll open up Luma booth here. And again, guys, remember, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me at any time, right? Um, so we'll go to launch event. So I got the iPad out right here. I'm going to go to the, the screen. So you notice right here that I have it, uh, turned off that browse button. So I'm going to go into the welcome screen. I'm going to enable this. All right. And then launch it. Cool. So we have it on, you go to launch event. And then now look, you see up here. I can click that button and then go back to the photos and then send them out for a drop off. Thank you for a drop off. I wouldn't recommend having this button because it could become like a privacy issue. If like, let's just say someone takes a photo and this is totally doable. I know it's going to sound crazy, but sometimes people will lift their shirt up during photos. If it's a drop off or pull down their pants and not know that, <laughs> that if you have this on, other people can go through and see it. And it's also a good idea to make your galleries private unless your clients tell you they want it public, we always ask. So even if you want to do reprints, right? Let's just say um, your printer's down or it, you you print and it gets jammed. This is a good idea to have this enabled so you can go back and do it. Um, so let me go back to Luma booth. Any questions on this, on like the the the, um, the gallery button, the, uh, the button, just let me know. Um, again, the themes, I don't recommend you guys ever use these is because it's look, it's just not that, I mean, this is decent, but but usually we, we want to customize all of this, right? And um, we did a live last week making templates on Canva. So if you go to the um, photo, photo booth 101 University, the school page, look under the courses, you will see the past uh, videos. Uh, we went through, we made welcome screens, we made templates, we made overlays. So we're not going to focus on that today. We're just going to go through the basics. So if you want to learn the templates and stuff that was done um, last week, actually earlier this week, but it's live on the website. Uh, so background, camera preview. Okay. So camera preview is, this is a welcome screen. This is if you want the welcome screen to actually be the view of the camera. This is useful for a few, few ways, right? Uh, we have like the digital AI backdrop on, that's why you see that. But this is this is actually a good idea if, Let's just say you don't have time to make a welcome screen. You can just have it right here. And then you can add some some words that say press button to start booth. This helps because it kind of makes sense. A lot of iPad photo booths don't look like photo booths. So if someone walks up to it and they see themselves and it says press button to start booth, it kind of it kind of helps. Also, if you enable this, it allows people to adjust themselves before the photos start, right? Because a lot of people want to like, you know, see how they look and do all of that. And if you don't have it on, they're just looking at the welcome screen. So what will happen is they'll press the button to start the photo booth, right? 
then uh, what happens is like, they're like, oh, I'm not ready. And then they're going to want to retake. So you can always enable the camera preview to be what people see when they first walk up to it. The welcome screen is literally the first impression of the software and, and them uh, how they're using it. So, so color, you guys, again, you can change the color of all of this if you want. Um, if you're going to upload your own background, this is where you would do it. So how you do it is, you know, again, check the video. We showed you guys how to do it, but you would save the image to the iPad or the iCloud. Then you would upload it here. Um, so font, this is pretty simple stuff here. You could change the font. If you have any, any words here, right. You could definitely do that. Um, and yeah, let's move. This is just basic stuff here, but we're going to get to the, the meat of it. The next setting. So by the way, we're, we're literally going to go from here to here, to here, to here. The first one we're going to talk about is a little bit more about the print layout, but then we're going to get to the capture modes, the print layout. This is just what we refer to in the industry as templates, right? You hear a lot of people call, I don't know why they call it print layout because we're not always printing, but this is what they call it. Um, it's pretty simple here. These, these photos can be moved, right? Um, let's just say you want a template with only two photos. You just click this, then you hit the delete button. Um, it's always a good idea to have your website on your templates. I think it's a great idea. Um, we do it. And if they, they ask us to take it off, then we'll take it off. It doesn't really happen often. And a misconception here is when you're uploading your templates, a lot of people will hit the import button, but the actual button you want to hit is add image. Um, and if, I don't know if there's really much to, to talk about here about the templates. Uh, you can adjust it, right? To get it right into place. If you need to change out the layout, you literally click the preset button. This is how we do it. Um, it'll be boom right here, the strips, or if you want to do like a different like style, you can definitely do that. Um, four by six, you can easily just click one of these, or you can like manually put in the size right here. You can go click it four by six, four by eight, or even custom, which I like. You could do that all here. And then again, let's just say we want just two photos or three. Let's just say I changed my mind. I want three. You click on that and then you just select an item. Boom, you make it three. It stands for the photos, right? This is the first photo that's taken, the second photo that's taken, and the third. You can make your templates in Luma Booth, you guys. I know a lot of people don't do that, but if you're on the fly and let's just say like you, you don't have time to make it on Canva, you can make it here. You could literally add all of the assets to your iPad, click add image, right? And then you can import it here. Let's just say this is part of the design. I could click on that. I can drag it, right? You can pinch it to make it smaller. Um, you can move it on the axis, but that that is a way to do that. You can even add the text if you want. There's a section for text uh, here as well. And uh, that's about it for here. Any questions on the template? Like this is just basic. We're not going over making templates. We're gonna, the main thing is going over the settings. Um, so let's go to capture mode. Capture mode, you guys, this is very important. Um, a capture mode basically just is these four things here, the photo experience, the GIF experience, boomerang slash 360 and video. When it's red, that means it's selected. So let's just say you want just a photo booth. You make sure that everything else is not selected. So when you launch your event, it is just photo, but let's just say you want to bring out all the bells and whistles. You want photo. So you click it, you come here. If you want GIF, you click it. Boomerang, you click it, video, you click it, right? So you can be in charge of what is being shown. So just to give you an example, we'll go to launch event and boom, now we have all of the options here. So let's go back to the settings, capture mode. We're gonna go to capture settings. These are the settings for all of the capture modes. So up here for photo, right? Before photo one, this just means how much time goes on before the first photo is taken. This is a good idea to have it from to seven to five seconds. Anything less than that is not enough time for most people to get ready unless you have the camera preview on, right? Then you could kind of justify a shorter one. Um, rule of thumb here, if you're in a, if you're doing an event where there's a lot of older people and I know you're gonna be like, well, what, what type of event would that be? Well, a, a 50 or a 60 year old birthday party, you know, it's give them more time. I find that sometimes they need a little bit more time. So I like to keep it around seven seconds. Um, and then the next run down here, it says before photos, all others. That's just the time that goes on from photo one to photo two, photo two to photo three, and photo three to photo four, if you have a fourth or fifth photo. So again, five seconds is okay. 
you don't need seven seconds because they've already adjusted themselves and they're ready. So five seconds is a pretty good one. Um, delay. Um, this right here is just basically how long does it show the photo that was just taken? So two seconds to me is good. You want to make sure you have um, at least a couple seconds so they can take the photo, then see it to react, right? Because a lot of people, the, the part of taking the photo is not just getting the, the template with all the photos. It's seeing each photo that's actually taken. Um, also generate GIF. This right here means <clears throat> if you don't have it selected, it'll just it'll just be one photo on the gallery. If you have this one selected, it'll do the photo with the template, but also take every single photo that was taken, compile it into a GIF. It'll it'll be a video file. It shows photo one, photo two, photo three, then it repeats. So it'll it'll generate a GIF. Um, I'll be honest, I don't like to enable this because it kind of messes, makes the gallery a little messy. And um, it's a little confusing to the client if they take a photo and then they see all the gifts, they may not know what it is. You can definitely ask if they want it, but I mean, most most of the time they, it, it's a conversation you don't need to have. So most of the time we leave this unclicked. Um, okay, so the next experience we're gonna go over right here is GIF. It's exactly what you guys think it is. It, it takes a few different photos, puts it into um, an overlay, not an overlay. I'm sorry, I got a message here. I got distracted. Let me mute this. By the way, I'm getting all these text messages. Um, so a GIF will, will take one photo to um, two to four photos or even five and play it in a loop, right? We just talked about it. So typically for GIF, you can um, add your own overlay. And again, look, it tells you right here. A lot of people say, I don't know what size to, to use. It, well, it's telling you right here. Transparent PNG is the file. You want it to be 960 uh, pixels and then height 720. That's if you want it rectangle. Square would be what I like to use because if you've ever used Luma Booth and you set up your photo booth and you can see over the backdrop for like GIF and all the other experiences, an easy solution is just to pick square. It'll crop it and you won't be able to see over the backdrop. But it tells you guys right here exactly what dimensions you need to use. 720 pixels by 720. Um, GIF reverse right here, right? I like to leave that unchecked. Um, I just like my it to play in a straight loop, not straight then back. Um, reverse is good for like boomerang if you're using 360, but we'll talk about that in a second. And then the rest of the settings here, just like the photos before photo one, how many seconds go by, um, before it starts again, seven seconds, um, before all other photos, how much time in between all of the other photos, five seconds delay again, delay, same thing in photo as photos. How long is it shown? Um, and then capture this, this is important. You guys. How many photos will it take in the GIF? A lot of people do two photos, but I think three photos in my own personal opinion looks good. It's a variety. Um, but again, you need at least two photos for GIF because if there's, <laughs> if it's only one photo, it's not a GIF, it's just a photo. Um, and then delay in between frames. Uh, this is where we leave it, the, the 300 megaseconds, um, milliseconds here. Um, okay, so we're going to go to... I guess we'll just skip over here to boomerang slash 360. All right. So if you're using Luma Booth for 360 on the capture mode, right? There's no need for you to have anything else going. You just need to keep this, this little infinity thing. This is for 360 and boomerang. So just keep that in mind. There's no need to have all of this. So we're going to go back to capture settings. Um, countdown again, I think seven seconds is, is more than enough. Save original video, meaning like if you want it to save uh, the original video, you could do it. Meaning like if you change these settings and you have it play fast, then slow, then fast, that's one file or just a regular video file. Um, I personally think it's just a waste of space, especially um, if you don't know, Luma Booth does save all of this stuff also to your hard drive on your, um, your hard drive on your iPad. I like to leave this unchecked. Um, this right here right? Where it says start capture when iPad is moved. This is only for a 360 setting. So what that means is if you have your, your booth ready to go and you're using 360, if you have this selected, you don't even have to press the button. You can just start the arm on the 360 and it'll start recording. This is useful if you don't want to walk up to the, I, uh, the iPad or the iPhone every single time to press the button. I actually use this feature when we use it for 360. And then right here where it says configure sensitivity, this basically just means, um, it's a little bit complicated, but you just basically set 
the sensitivity of the start when it's moved. So if you have it set to very sensitive, it'll start with a slight movement. If you decrease the sensitivity, it can move a little bit, but it won't start, which is actually useful if you're using 360 because sometimes somebody may nudge the arm and it may move a little bit, but you don't want that to activate it. So that's where you can play with it. I personally don't even touch this setting, to be honest. <laughs> we just leave it. Um, this is important. Boomerang and 360, this isn't just for 360, also for boomerang quality. Obviously you would think, right? We're gonna want this the highest quality possible, but just remember the higher the quality, the bigger the file is. Meaning the bigger the file you have, the more chances if you're on unstable connection for it not to go through and stop sending photos. I personally like to keep it at eight megabytes per second because I do want the highest quality. Um, but I'm always doing an internet speed test and I'll go about that a little bit later. Internet is everything. You guys, if you're doing 360 and you're airdropping everything, or you have like Luma assistant, you don't need to worry about that. But like for, for most people that are using Luma booth to send out text messages or emails, um, you're gonna, you know, you want to pay attention to this and then down here size, right? Again, this is just the format of the photo. I think to me personally, I like to set it to square either 720 or 1080. To me, I think it just looks nicer um, if you have that backdrop issue, but you can play with this. You guys, these are all, it's all preference. And the cool thing about Luma Booth is, right? And I'll, we'll go over this in a second. Where is it at? You could do a preview. So look, look, all of the settings you do here, if you want to just check out the preview, it'll show you what you have. So we'll go here. I'll click it. It's going to take a minute. But like, if, if you want to see what it looks like with all the settings, it'll show you here, right? Which is really, really cool. You can even send this to your customer. So if you're doing 360, you could do all of your settings and then you can have that preview and you can sa even save the preview right here. So, um, damn, how do you go back? Okay. Okay. But we'll go through all this first and you'll see the difference, right? How we have a look there. We'll, we'll show you guys after. Um, okay. So we're going to go... We'll go rectangle, we'll go square. And then right here where it says display text before recording, get ready. That is literally, let me show you guys here. And I'm gonna lower the brightness on here so you guys can see. Let me um click the zoom. All right, so cool, you can see. <clears throat> get ready. So you can have that saying that, but you can also have it in the text here. So let me see, let me show you guys exactly what I mean. So for GIF. Get ready. Oh, wait, we're doing boomerang. What am I talking about? It's boomerang. One second, guys. Hold on. Get ready. So right here where it says get ready and move. I don't know if you can see it, but let's just, just show you. Which iPad is that? Good. This is an iPad 12.9, uh, 2020. Okay, but cool. yeah, I don't know if you guys saw it, but it, it literally will tell you, you have the option to to display what it is showing. Um, So let's go back in here. So why is this even important? Why would you want to change it? Well, I have it on, on, on that event, right? So if you're doing like a 360, you may want to put get ready. You can even put don't move your feet or or... If it's like, let's just say for, for video, right? Down here, you can change it for, for all this stuff, right? Display text. You can have it say whatever you want. For example, for video, instead of it saying, get ready, you can say, leave a message for the bride and groom, right? Kind of like a command. So that's what you could do, but most people just do leave it, get ready. Um, but like, let's just say you're doing a video booth. You can give instructions to the people that are actually using the booth to even tell them what to do. And then right below this, right? under the boomerang section, it says recording text. While it's recording, it's gonna say the words recording. You can again, have it even say like a, a call to action, like a uh, shout and cheer, or let me hear you scream, right? You can go in here and you can change that if you'd like. But we'll just leave it here, um, right here. Okay, blink flash while recording with the back camera. If you're not doing 360, there's no point of you selecting this. If you're using a 360, you're going to want to, I think it's a great idea because if you're using the 360, right? Um, you have your phone and we're going to make sure I can see you guys here. Let me, let me change this really quick. 
Okay, so if you're using your iPhone, and I highly recommend you use an iPhone for your 360, you have your arm, and then you have, right, let's just assume I'm on the, I'm on the platform, right? This light will start blinking when it's, re it'll turn on when it's, when it's recording. It's useful for the people that are on the platform. That way they know it's recording. And it's also good for you because once you see it, to st uh, the light turn off on the phone, you know that it's no longer recording. You can stop the remote so they can end their session. It's super, super, super useful. Um, and if you're using 360 and you're, and you're not using this feature here, the blink flash, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. You should be using it. So right here, presets, you guys, this basically, this turtle sign, that means that it's just going to, it's just slow. The, the rabbit means fast to slow. The rabbit to turtle to rabbit means it'll go fast, slow to fast, and then fast, slow to fast to slow. For me, I think this is for 360. I think I like, uh, we usually do this one fast, slow to fast, but again, just remember, um, everything does change when you do it here. So let's just watch. Let me give you an example. So right here, it's telling you, right? The final duration. And again, this is if you're using 360 booth. If you're not using 360 booth, you can just have it set to any of these. It really doesn't matter. But again, just remember, you can go through and see what you like. Um, the higher you go up, the longer the clips get, right? 14 seconds, 23.50 seconds. That is a long file. That's 23 megabytes, you guys. That's a big size file. You got to remember too, this is important because if you have huge files, it's going to take a long time to send and sometimes it won't send and it can be an issue. So again, remember, you got to factor in everything, right? The quality. Look, I lower the quality. The, the, the file size goes down. We went from 11 to it was 23 down to 11. So you do have to factor this in, right? Um, and again, if you're using this for boomerang, you know, there's no need to have the reverse. I personally don't think. Um, but when we do boomerang, I like to do fast. We, we will just do this manually. I'll go recording duration. That just means how long is it recording? So let's just say you're doing a photo booth only. I think the sweet spot personally for me is about uh, four seconds. And some people think that's too long because usually with boomerang, people are making like quick movements. But if you do this for like four seconds, it's a little much. <laughs> um, so again, here, let me just show you guys to what I mean. Look, I, I, I did this setting here. Let's go to the preview and you guys can see what, what happens here. So again, this would be perfect example to send somebody that is hiring you for 360. Once you dial in your settings, uh, it's going to take a while because it is a big file. Remember? So, so look, it goes slow, fast, slow. Then it's going to go back to fast. Right. And then reverse. And again, look how cool this is. You guys look, it even tells you the stats right here. You can save this preview and send it to your client. Um, and yeah, this is the boomerang slash 360 setting here. Uh, again, remember, you can change the speeds here. The soundtrack, if you have a, a, like music you want to use, you can add this here. Um, anim animated overlays. We don't ever really use this, but if you want to, you can. Um, to me, I think most people, what they like to do is use just like an, an overlay. Um, and again, if you guys check the last live we did, the last video, you'll see how to um, import these, but it tells you right here the dimensions of all that. And you wanna make sure it's PNG. Uh, you could throw a song before and then a song after. Uh, I personally don't like using songs for the 360. And the only time we'll do it is if the client requests it. Most of the time they don't even, they don't even know. They'll just, they'll just ask for the, the booth, the 360. And um, that is the Boomerang 360. I think we skipped the video. So now let's just talk about video. This is all repetitive stuff, guys. Countdown, it's the same as the other ones. Video length, this is important. The highest you can go is 60 seconds. Most of the time, I will do a 10 second recording. Five is usually not enough. Um, 10 is the good spot. And then usually around 15 seconds is when you start noticing people running out of things to say. You know, 10 seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but like at the actual event it is. Um, and again, this is all stuff you can ask your client too. Like you don't have to decide all of this. You can ask them, how long do you want the recordings to be? 
Do you want them short and sweet? Do you want them long? Some people will want long. Um, quality, again, remember, you can bump it up. The higher you go, the, the higher the file is, the higher the quality is. But remember, again, the, the size of the files tends to go up. Um, so if you're in a place and you're trying to send out videos and the internet's not the best and you have it to eight, try dialing it back to maybe five and see if that helps, right? If you're ever in that situation, save original video, same thing as last time. Size is same as everything else. You can literally change it from being a rectangle, right? Or to a square where it's cropped on the top and the bottom and vice versa, right? If you want to switch it back. And again, display text before recording, it's saying, you know, while the countdown is getting ready, it's going to say, get ready. You can change this. Um, and again, for video, you can add music before recording. You can add music after recording and then an image overlay. Again, it changes if you're doing square, it changes everything down here, right? So these are the capture settings. And again, guys, if you're texting into the um, into the chat, I'm not able to see it. If you have a question, just, just unmute your mic and ask away. So background removal, we're going through the settings. Okay. This is where you would do your green screen stuff, right? So if you have an actual green screen, this would be the place to do it. You would actually need a, a green screen. Then you would come in here, you would select, you can basically select the color you want to use. But most people don't have green screen. Most people that are using LumaBooth aren't using this, right? They're using the AI background removal, uh, which I like. I think this is an underrated feature. We're charging our clients, you guys, believe it or not, $50 to activate this. And I think I can charge a lot more. It's just a couple clicks. So what I love about it too, is you don't have to use just one file. The, uh, you can have add multiple files. So let's just say we wanted this one, right? It's really important to remember when you, when you look for files, if you're just pulling up some random file to have as the background, you, you're most likely not going to have it right off the bat be the right size. So look, Luma Booth tells you everything. Recommended size, right? For how we have the iPad orientated and all that. 1920 height and then, I'm sorry, width 1920 height is 1440 pixels. So you can find whatever files you want to use on Google, open up Canva, create a, a file that is these these dimensions, then in, and then drag it and then just make sure you fill it in. Um, you can add multiple um, multiple ones too. So that's what's really cool. Where it says image selection, let guests choose or cycle through automatically. I think it's always best to let the guests choose. I think we can all agree, right? To let them choose versus letting it do it automatically. Um, look, recommendations, up to four people. Meaning, you know, don't get me wrong. It sounds wild to think that it's limited to four people, but I've done up to like fifth, I think the no. I've done 10 people with this before. It works but it doesn't work perfectly, you know? And that's one thing you got to remember, like with the background removal, props and phones don't really do well. And if you have like dogs in the picture, it's really set for people. Um, it says four people, but I've done plenty more. Lighting is everything. The more light you have, the better that the background removal will work. Also a key here, guys, do not have your photo booth set up and using background removal, AI, where there's people moving behind. You want it set at a wall where there's nothing going on behind it because it's going to struggle. So right now it's not looking the best, but I literally have like no light over here. It's dark. Um, person height is at least half of the image height. So basically like you don't want to have somebody like this because then it's not going to really register as a person. Um, but again, lighting is everything and then having it at a wall. So that is basically green screen, a um, AI background removal. You can add more clips or more uh, files, I mean. Effects. Effects is another word for filters, right? They put effects, but it's filter. So you would turn it on, right? Let guests choose, cycle through. Again, I always like let guests choose. This is also where you're going to do the glam. If you want to start doing glam booth, this is how you would do it. I'll just do this really quick. You would go to this feature right here where it says BW glam. You make sure you have it selected. Then beauty mode, this is where you turn on the uh, skin smoothing effect. The higher you go, the more it'll like even out the, the blemishes. Um, but that's for a whole nother video. You can even do your own custom filters. You can do these like, I believe they're called LUTs. You can like make your own and then add it. Um, have I ever done that? No, I'll be honest with you guys. I've never done it. So, okay, we'll go, let's just say 
you know, you don't, you don't want any filters, which I'll be honest, I don't even have that on my booth. I don't even, most people don't even care for this, but we'll only really use it for glam, but you could select whatever filters you want them to have an option to do. And if the filters will only go for the photos, it won't go a filter over the template. It'll just be for the photos. So you could select whatever ones you have, right? You can make sure you have that on or off. Um, take test photo, right? You could do test, use a sample photo if you'd like. So if you want to show the clients what it will look like, right? You could do that. Look, this would be an example. And then if you turn it on, you could dial it in. You see how I'm dragging it? It does change it a little bit. Um, so yeah, this is where you would do the filters. Uh, let's just leave this one off. Okay, next up, stickers. All right. Also known as digital props. They call it stickers, which makes sense because you basically take a photo, then you... Uh, after you can press and do what stickers. Um, anyone that's watching this live, you guys send me a DM on school or uh, yeah, send me a DM. I'm gonna send you guys all of the Luma Booth digital props we have for free. So you see here, it says custom. These are the ones that we have, but Luma Booth has their own. So I'll go to default, but I'm not, I'm just not a big fan. I, it's kind of limited, right? So you can even import your own. You can make your own. You can go to uh, Canva. If you get a, a, a wedding, you can ask for photos of the bride and the groom, right? Close-up photos, and you could literally have their heads here as digital props. It is a hit at every single wedding if you use it. Um, these are just some of the, the custom ones that we sell. But if you guys want these for free, just, just hit me up. Just say, hey, Drew, I was watching. And it, it has to be today. But let me know. Just say, hey, Drew, I want all the digital props from Luma Booth. This is where you do it. You go to choose. You can add whatever files you want um, here. Um Camera settings. Okay, okay, okay. This is the good stuff here, guys. All right, so right now we have everything set to automatic. And why we do this is we do a lot of drop-offs and a lot of pickups. If you're not gonna be there to change the settings, you gotta do man, I'm sorry, automatic camera settings. You don't want manual. Manual is good if you're gonna be there. That way you can tweak it, right? So let's just go to manual, right? And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's do, is it gonna allow me to? I don't know if it's gonna allow me to because I'm on, yeah. It's not gonna allow me to change this because I'm on my laptop. Um, yeah, yeah. So you would basically do automatic, even, okay, let's just say you don't even know photography, then 100% then do automatic settings. You want these to say off. If you're gonna be there, you can manually change these settings to get the most crispiest, correct well-lit photo possible but be aware when you change the lights in the venue and you have everything set to manual your photo will either be overexposed or underexposed if the light changes so this is where you change that um down here where it says advanced uh you can change the camera so if you have the newer ipads and you're using the like i think it's the 2021 and on you can use the ultra wide front facing camera or just the wide camera. I don't like the ultra wide camera because it's a little bit too distorted. So you can change which camera you're using. And if you're using 360, you can also make sure you're using the back camera. Uh, video stabilization. This Sorry. Is, yeah. Will, will that recognize a DSLR? Yeah, you could do it in here too. If you have it, if you have it uh, hooked up, it, it should read it here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, great question. Um, so video stabilization, this is if you're using 360 and I 100% recommend that you have it set to either high or standard. You might as well utilize it. It's built-in video stabilization. So if you guys have ever seen people use a 360 booth and you look at the video and it's just kind of wobbly, one, they, uh, they don't, they most likely don't have the stabilization on and you'll be surprised how much of a difference it makes. Uh, but if you're just using it for for regular video or boom, I'm sorry, regular boomerang or all of that, you don't need it because it's static. Your iPad and your your whatever device you're using is not moving. Zoom, it's exactly what this sounds like. <laughs> Zoom. So let's just say you need to punch in. You can, um, like for example, like let's just say you have your photo booth set up and you're having an issue, like you you don't like the framing, but you can't move the booth. You can zoom. Uh, print setup. All right. Now we are talking about everything related printing, right? So 
this would be right here, general. You need to make sure if you're printing, you have at least one of these checked. Print automatically means as soon as they take the photo, after they're done with the last photo, it'll engage and it'll start the printing process. Display print button. This means after they take the photos, do you want a button to show up to where you can press it and select more prints? This is important, you guys. Remember this. Luma Booth off the gate will have max event prints set to 250. What this means is if you run your event, if you go over 250 photos, you're no longer going to be able to print. A, a piece of advice, jack this number up. 999999. That way you never hit it. Um, why would you ever want max event prints? Well, let's just say you're running your business and you're doing a, a drop off and you guys agree to 250 photos. You don't want them to go over it. This is where you would do that. But personally, I don't ever, I don't run my business like that. I don't know anyone else that really does. Um, max guest copies. This means how many photos can they print per session? If you're doing unlimited, you want everyone to have an option, just set it to 100. But let's just say you're doing a drop-off, which we do plenty of drop-offs. We set it to one. If they want more copies, they're going to have to take more photo sessions, if that makes any sense. Um, alignment. All right. This is important. If you get your photos and you do prints and it, it looks like it's shifted to the left, you just come here to print setup and you adjust it. You adjust the... Um, here a few notches, right? You see this box that's moving. That is the, the photo. So let's just say it's, it's a little bit to the left. You want to adjust it slightly, run a session, print it, compare it. And then just, you're just making micro adjustments. This is where you do it here. Print test page. I don't recommend it. It's kind of useless. It doesn't really tell you much. I think the best way is to actually do a session to see the print, and then you can reset it to, to factory. And then right here, right? Where it says select print method. If you're going to go air print, this is where you would do it. Most of us are using Luma Assistant. This is where you're going to go to select that. Um, right now it's in red and we're not going to go over printing. This is not the call for that. But if you want to know if it's working, this would say Luma Assistant is connected and then it would turn blue. It would turn teal, right? Um, like a teal color. And then if you're using the WPS Pro or any of the other, I believe the other dongles, this is where you would use this. Um, I recommend Luma Booth Assistant. I think it's the most reliable way uh, to do it. And again, look, it even like, let's just say you're on your laptop. You can download this if you want, Luma Booth Assistant. It's free. Um, let's move forward now to email, SMS. This is the good stuff, guys. I'm going to talk about something. I, I Not that I learned, but I was reminded. If you... Um, We'll just go here. Look, so let's just say, let's just say you're doing a free event. If you're doing a free event, you want to be able to market to every single person that used your booth. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in, in this call, but let's just say you only want them to email. Well, guess what? You have to come on here and turn off SMS. That means text. You only want them to email. This is where you would do it. But if you want to enable everything, you would turn both of them on. You could do Instagram to where they, people can log into IG, but it's just such a long process. Most people leave it off, but let's start off right here, right? Where it says email, reply to, you can throw an email address in there. So if they want to reply, you can reply, but here it is subject, subject, right? Subject is here is your photo. You can put your photo booth company right here if you want, right? Um, this is the, this is what they're getting when they put their email. Also right in here, you have a little bit of coding. Here's your photo. It'll be a, uh, the photo there. You can even plug yourself here, right? You can put uh, to rent or to book or, or to reserve your photo booth rental or your party call 555. Well, my bad. Call 555-555. Five 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 five, or or you could put a, you could put your website, you could put whatever, you can even put links to leave us a review on Google, whatever you want, you could do that here. But just remember, guys, do not put any other links on the SMS, right? So I've seen this happen last week. If you're a part of our uh, Photo Booth One Hundred One Luma Booth group chat, someone was having an issue that they, they were not getting their text messages. Nobody was because they went to SMS and they put their, their, put their website. 
if you do this, there's a high chance that your, your messages will get flagged because you're already sending out a text through Luma Booth that has the link to the photo. If you put another uh, link, it will get flagged most likely. So don't do that in SMS. You can get away with it on email, if that makes any sense. Um, what else? What else? Uh, again, Instagram, have that off. But look, you toggle it on. It's that easy, you guys. Uh, we're going to go next to sharing um, the sharing section. Cloud sharing, right? If you turn this off, that means you can't do QR code. Um, this has to be on for QR code. So if you use Luma Booth, you can have, have one of the ways they share it by uh, pressing a QR code. Airdrop. If you're doing an event, it's 100% a good idea to leave airdrop on. Because if you're ever in a situation where the internet stops, let's just say you're doing a drop off, or even if you're there, the internet goes out, anyone with an iPhone can get their photo instantly. You can be in the middle of the desert and have this feature because it's iPad, which is Apple to iPhone. You can sh share that. Um, but again, remember, if you're doing events to collect data, free events, and you want those sweet email addresses, you want to turn all this off. You only want them to be able to do email. So just remember that, guys. Um, upload original photos. I like to keep this feature on, which will like like other ways to share. I believe that goes on to, uh, no, I keep it off, actually. What am I saying? We keep it off. That means origi uh, upload original photos onto photo share. Meaning if it does a template with three photos, it'll also show the individual photos, which most people don't want. Keep that off if you don't want that. Um, okay. All right. This is huge here, guys. Sharing screen. Time out on screen. This means, let's just do this here. Hopefully you guys can see me. Let me know, guys. Feel free to interrupt if you have any questions or comments. Um, okay. So we do drop-offs. So I, I always make sure that I have my timeout on the sharing screen, screen set to 20. That just means- Get ready. Right, it's gonna take a photo. Um, this isn't important. Let me make sure you guys can see this right. Let me go to Zoom. Okay. Okay, smile. And what you hear is the virtual attendant. We're gonna go through these settings in a second. Um, let me check the chat. Say cheese. Cool, perfect, awesome. Okay, so the 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 timeout screen. Ooh, looking good. Share your photos. All right, one second, guys. Okay, so now we go to next. Now the timeout screen time has started, right? There's a line up here. You see it moving by my finger. It might be hard to see. That is how much time goes by before it goes back to the welcome screen. Meaning if it's like, let's just say, they take a photo, one person puts their phone number in, one person scans the QR code, and then there's inactivity. It's how much time until it gets to the welcome screen for the next person. If you have, let's go back to Luma Booth. If you don't leave enough time, it's a problem. And I've seen so many people make this mistake where they're, they're gonna put five seconds. That is not enough time for somebody to, to, do, to do something, right? You wanna give them enough time. And I'd rather have people waiting around for it to get to the welcome screen then it to be quick and then not, not have access to their photos. So just remember, it's super important to give them enough time. Um, show or original photos. Again, that is just like um, right here, exactly what it says. Allows guests to view and share original photos by adding a thumbnail in the bottom left, just like on the welcome screen to, to, to show there. I don't like that option, to be honest. This is good here. Re uh, display re retake button. I think it's a great idea to have it because there's a lot of people that will take a photo and they won't be happy with it. And if you don't have this on, they're, they're going to have to like go through the process and exit out. So allowing people to retake, I think is a good idea. And then right here, it says retake button text. I leave it retake because that's exactly what it does. Um, WhatsApp, you can do the WhatsApp sharing. I don't do it. We leave it off. Um, it's per personal preference. Now to virtual attendant. This is one of the most underrated sections on Luma Booth. Virtual attendant is the voice that you hear while the booth is being used. If you don't want it, just turn it off. I think it's a great idea. Um, you can change the voices, right? So you, under style, there is a British female. You can literally go, uh, where is it at? Not here. You can go to the, the pick one and do a- Get ready. 
See? Do you model? Do you model? <laughs> you can like change the commands. You can change the voice. Um, but out of, off the gate, I think it's set to American female. Um, you can go Dutch. It's going to be fun. Achtung, jetzt geht's los. Tippe, um zu starten. Right? I mean, most of us wouldn't be using that. Uh, American male. Get ready. So it's personal preference, right? Um, custom. This is something I've been doing that not a lot of people, have, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone else doing this. You can upload your own. So why would you ever use this? Well, if you want to be a very customized and you really want to stand out with your company, imagine you get hired to do someone's wedding. You can have the bride and the groom record audio commands and have the photo booth give these commands to their guest at their wedding. We charge $100 to do this. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's easy money. I just have them send me a memo clip with, with them reading out commands and we add it on. People, some people believe, some people get wet chonies over this stuff. They love it. <laughs> I, I I don't mind doing it. It's a little bit of work, but you know, it's just preference. So I just love that Luma Booth gives you this option to do this. But if you don't want to do any of that, just do the pre-selected ones. Um, look, for pick one, you can change it. So why would you want to change it? Okay. Um, after capturing, you can have it uh, say something, um, but processing, right? Meaning after it takes the photo, right? Where it says, share your photo. You can have them say, let's go here. Um, sign your photos, right? Where is this at? Sign your photos. So if you have like a... a like a book, uh, what is it called? One of those uh, scrapbooks. You can have it say something like that, right? Or if you want to upload a random, a different command, you can have them, you can have a, record it yourself saying, please take this, please take the print and sign it and put it in the guest book, whatever. You know, you can customize all of this. Um, end of session, meaning after it goes back to the welcome screen, like right before it, you can have it say, thank you, you know, or um, exit the booth, right? You can do all of that. Um Randomize, you can have it do randomize, but I I don't like that. I like I just keep it basic. Um and uh okay, this is important too. A lot of you guys don't know this, and um I don't use it, but a lot of people don't know that it can do this. You can have your welcome screen play a video at first, and you do this here under virtual attendant. I don't know why it's here. It doesn't make sense to be here. It should probably be under the welcome screen section, but um, you can um basically put a video upload the video and the video can be anything you want. So if you're doing a corporate event, you can have like a video playing with like, let's just say it's for Chick-fil-A. You can have a Chick-fil-A's logo playing or if they want to do some sort of video. But the only thing I don't like is if you upload that, it's not something that you can touch to start the booth. You have to touch it to get to the welcome screen, if that makes any sense. And then look right here, it's telling you this video will loop. So some people want to know this feature, but this is where it's at. Um, so we're going to go next survey. All right, guys, this is where the marketing of this software really does help you. So survey is basically, would you like to ask the guests to answer a survey? All right. This is where you could do this. Why would you want to do this? Well, the last time I used this was actually for a corporate event that we had. Um, they wanted to know where the people lived that were going to this event. They were super curious about this. So we would set this up, right? So we're going to turn this on. So what's your question? What city do you live live in? Right? Required, meaning they have to answer this question in order for them to get to the next steps to share their photo. So, okay, what type of answer do you want? Short answer, long answer, or a multiple choice, right? This is where you would do this here. Yeah, you could set you could set the multiple choices. You could put Long Beach, right? You could put the next one, La Puente, next one, Hacienda Heights, whatever you want. Um, or like, let's just say this is also useful, guys, if, if this may be a little advanced, but if you want to get into permanent installs with the photo booth business, meaning you want to, you want businesses to pay you on a monthly basis to keep a photo booth there, an iPad booth, you can ask questions like that are useful, right? Where did you hear about this restaurant? Or how many times do you um, come? Or what can we improve on? Or what's your favorite thing to eat here? This is all valuable information. 
Um, and check, check this out too. You set these questions up. This is where you would click where it says view responses to see the responses, or you can delete it, right? So this is definitely something I think you, you should know and utilize. So if you have a corporate event, let's just say they want to hire you for a, a fair, a festival, right? Knowing that you can ask this is going to help you. And believe it or not, when we have corporate events, we are charging them $150 to activate the survey mode. And it literally takes us maybe five minutes to come in here and set this up. So the more you know about your software, the more well-equipped you can be. Or let's just say you don't want to charge your corporate clients for this. It could just it could just help, right? Um, next is disclaimer. Okay, this is important, you guys. Um, disclaimer, meaning would you like to require all of your guests to accept a disclaimer? Luma Booth has this one right off the bat, right? I'm not going to read this all, but it basically says, do you hereby grant, and then it'll say name of organization. So if you want to put your company, this is where you'd plug it in here. Permission to use my likeness for a photograph, for, for marketing. And uh, you can even have a section in here where you add like, hey, um, by agreeing to this, you allow us to send you emails um, about our rentals, right? To promotion. Or if you're using this photo booth in a business, you would basically have all of that info for the for the restaurant or for the bar or for the barbershop. You could put whatever terms you want here to where they have to un they have to agree to it. So like let's just say you're doing a free event. You should probably it'd be a good idea to have the disclaimer on, right? So that they agree. And again, it's non-negotiable. Look, note, it says right here, note, if guests do not agree to the disclaimer, their session will be canceled and their photos deleted. So look, it says warning, your session will be canceled. If you don't agree, right? You could put, if you don't agree, right? Whatever. Um, and then agreement, I agree. And then to cancel, it'll say cancel session. So, you know, it's a good idea to do it. If you're going to do like corporate events too, corporate is very, so if you're doing a wedding, you may not need to do this. If you have it in your contract, then you can kind of get by, but corporate loves to have this because they're very worried about lawsuits. They're worried about, contacting people that maybe didn't want to be contacted. Um, so you can have this disclaimer and uh, let's hit the drop down menu. That's pretty much it for here. Um, so it, right here, it's going to say launch event, right? If you put the drop down menu, but there's more settings. We're not done yet. We're almost done guys. So under here, sharing status, this is so important. Okay. If you're ever at an event and your photos aren't being sent out, means your internet probably stopped. So that's when you click sharing status, it will show right here, total pending. You'll you'll see a number here. That means that the internet stopped and you need to close the app out, uh, connect to a solid internet connection, then relaunch the app and you'll see the pending photos go from pending to sent, right? Super important. It even tells you here, these items will be sent once you have an internet connection, but you have to close out the app. Um, drop down menu, lock pin. All right. So this is when you, you will we'll create it, right? Five, 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 five. This is when you launch the event. There's, there, there's an uh, option to lock the settings right here. So go lock. So that means that no one can just walk up to your iPad and change your settings. You guys want to know what's funny? I, I forgot to do this not too long ago and I forgot to, to lock it and a client or somebody's guest, I don't know how, they went into the software and then they enabled the boomerang GIF and video feature. I don't know how they did it or how they knew, but you don't want that. You want you want it to be locked for you. You don't want them coming in here and changing these. They could even, if someone wanted to be an a-hole, right? They could have, if you don't lock it, they can have access to your past events and start deleting things. You don't want that. So make sure it's locked. Um, account is literally just your account info, right? Um, about Luma Booth. It's just telling you what version you are on the app. So why would you ever need to know this? Well, you know, if there's an update, you can you can see what version you're on. Um, most people don't really do that uh, or know about that. But um, that's pretty much it for the settings. Oh, okay. Let's talk about up here. You see these little things up here? This button here will do the link sharing. So if you want to share the link straight from the iPad or you want to turn it on or off, you could do that here. You just copy this button here and then you have access. If you want to hit manage album, you click on this. It'll take you to photoshare.co where you can delete test photos and do all of that. That's where you would do that. 
Um, uh, settings, uh, I never use this. Uh, settings, scene complete. And then this one here, uh, where's this at? Takes you to sharing status. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. Don't forget, in the description, sign up and get a discount for Luma Booth. Also, if you want to join Photo Booth 101 University, you want to level up your business or you want to learn, that'll be down in the description. We do courses. We do live calls just like the one you watched. We have, uh, what else? Community. You can reach out to other Photo Booth owners. There's a white labeling section where you can book events, get events from other owners. There's so much more in the description. God bless. I'll see you guys soon.